Hello, I'm Bill Rogers with the Rogers Shooting School. We're going to talk about the proper techniques of drawing. Uh, I'm demonstrating with a 7360 holster. It uh, has what we call an SLS uh, rotating hood at the top. And it also has uh, another locking feature called an ALS that's operated by the thumb. Uh, we teach that we do this almost simultaneously, but let's talk about the steps to make a proper draw. The first part of the draw is what we call the index point and that's a quick movement of the hand until our hand finds a, pos a start position. Uh, with, with the SLS system I recommend that the start position is about almost an inch from the web of your hand to the SLS, to the edge of the SLS. So that would be the locating point. So you need to come to that spot as quickly as you can find it. Once you find that start point on the SLS as I push down and go forward it takes and puts my hand in the shooting grip position. Now my thumb is positioned on top of the ALS so all that I have to do is operate the ALS and lift the weapon. So once we get the index portion and we now start the unlocking procedure, the next procedure is actually how we overcome a friction or whatever uh, frictional lock you have and to draw the weapon out of the holster. If you notice, the elbow needs to be straight back. If you let the elbow pitch out at all, it causes the draw to go in an arc. We see a lot of people that they, as they tend to draw the weapon, they put pressure toward the front of the holster. And their concept is, is that they want the weapon to fly out of the holster as soon as they can. Well, this is un improper. First of all, uh, it, has, it has a, a very a serious tactical disadvantage because if you're drawing like this, you're pushing the weapon out and if somebody's about to overcome their, your position, they can take the weapon away from you. S secondly, is that then your presentation to the tar tar target is an arc. What we try to teach is that you're going to lift the weapon up close to your body, keeping it close to your body, and you're going to raise the weapon up until we're going to start with our support hand right around our sternum. So we need to bring the weapon up to that point, and then we turn it toward the target quickly. At this point, we can fire and hit the target. But from this position, the hand crosses over, the support hand crosses over, and now we drive the weapon underneath our dominant eye all the way to the target. The advantage of all of this is that right now the weapon is in a guarded position. So if we learn to draw basically straight up, elbows straight back, keeping the weapon close to our body, we're in a guarded position. If somebody is about to overrun us, we can push them away. We can actually shoot from this position. We don't have the weapon out in front of us. Secondly, is that when you have the weapon and you're drawing it like this in an arc position, since the weapon starts off in a position like this, our peripheral vision cannot give us alignment. Whereas when I drive the weapon right here, from this point on, my peripheral vision allows me to take and align this weapon horizontally. So as I'm driving the weapon out, I have proper alignment horizontal, so all I have to do is get the vertical alignment at the last instant. So when you put this all together, is the first motion is a quick motion. There's a pause, just until you now have the index point. You release the holster, you draw the weapon close to your body, you take and rotate it as quickly as you get it to the highest position. This hand crosses under and it works underneath the dominant eye. As we drive the weapon out, the finger would go into the trigger guard and we'd press and fire the shot off. Now, if you happen to be cross-eyed dominant, you're right-handed and you're left-eyed or the reverse of that. <clears throat> If you haven't taken the time to learn how to draw and shoot underneath the dominant eye with the dominant hand, what you typically have to do is you have to take and cross over your body slightly so that it now is under the dominant eye. If you don't do that, you wind up by driving the weapon at an angle and your mind can't align the sight as easily as it can if you drive it right to the dominant eye, in this case of my left eye is dominant, and then I drive it underneath the dominant eye from this point on, I've got steering information that I can finally make the shot. When you put the draw all together in just a smooth motion, it looks just like this. We're right out on the target. We're going to take you over and show you a fixture that we use at the school that you could build for yourself to teach people how to draw properly. And uh, in that, we'll, we'll show you how it works. <clears throat> okay, this is a fixture that we use here at the school when we have th students that have difficulty in learning how to draw. And basically, we have a window cut out that's about the height of your sternum. But from this position right here, you need to be able to draw the weapon and extend it through without hitting the frame. And so essentially, from this position, 
that's the proper draw and it forces you to keep the weapon close to your body until you have it to this position and then from this point on we're driving as we drive we would work the trigger so the idea is from this position we unlock drive toward the target you make it one smooth operation and looks like this okay yep you're good Okay. Go get